All right, good afternoon. I wanted to talk to you about uh, our rotary BML technology as it's being applied in the solar market for parabolic troughs and uh, tower applications for heliostats. And uh, what, what I've got in front of me is a little operator interface that we created uh, that basically shows a dial for movement, uh, the ability to uh, type in a degree of position we want to go to and have it go there, and then I can simulate a power loss. What's unique about this is that we're using the BML uh, in a modified uh, absolute encoder application. And what we're doing is we have two bands of magnetic pulses on here. One is a continuous band, uh, and each pulse on that band is 0 0.015 degrees. So we can hold our accuracy to 0 0.015 degrees on this uh, situation, and our repeatability should be about 0 .008, 0 0.0008 degrees of repeatability. And the key to this is that uh, we have a lookup table in the computer. There's a little PLC inside this box that has a lookup table in it. And it, sh it has uh, a relationship to the reference pulses. The way this works on the reference pulse side is there's a set of reference pulses that are a fixed distance apart. And then in between each of those reference pulses that are a fixed distance apart, we have another set of pulses which are placed in between there logarithmically. By doing that, we generate a unique distance between each two pulses. That becomes the unique number of pulses that we count off of the encoder. And uh, so as we, as we find one pulse and then we go to another pulse, we then look up in a table inside that little PLC, it's a $200 PLC in that box, that uh, tells us, uh, because of the number of pulses, what uh, degree at position we are located and it then plugs that value in. And I'm going to initially show you how we can go find a position. So I'm going to tell this to go to, a, go to a 85 degrees and enter and I'm going to tell it to move. And you'll notice it takes a little bit. Oh, I got better get it off the stop. So it goes enabled and it goes and it finds 85 degrees as you can see. Uh, another condition here is that I would lose power. In this typical solar application, if we assume that zero degrees was all the way to the east in the morning, and we, got a, we have a storm or something coming or we want to park this for the night, what we do is we uh, tell this thing to go to a specific de degree rotation position, and we tell it to shut off. And so I'm going to tell this to go to 185 degrees, uh, which could be similar to a parking position, and hit enter and then go to move and you'll see it'll go find 185 degrees. This is a 1.2 RPM motor we're trying to use as a simulation of the shaft of the parabolic trough. Now what happens is, is I've lost my mind and I've told this thing I turn up power and it's one o'clock in the morning and I want to put my panel back over to the um, easterly direction what this will do is it will then go more degrees and find itself, locating its reference. It's at 227 degrees, and now I want to go all the way back to the east. So I tell it to go to zero degrees, and I hit enter, and I tell it to move, and it will go find zero degrees. Now, the pulse counting you see, it's just counting the pulses that it sees as it's moving. Uh, in the direction of this thing. Remembering there's 66 pulses per every degree of rotation. So that gives you, as I mentioned before, an accuracy of 0 0.015 degrees. So now we've come back to a, a um, situation where we're, we're at a unique location. And let's talk about what happens uh, the first time we want to go mount this on the equipment. We have predetermined a location for to permanently mount the sensor on the machine. And by the way, every time we see a reference pulse, this little green light will blink back here. You'll see that periodically. So we've determined that we have this machine at mechanical zero or all the way to the east, and I'm going to put this band on for the first time. And I have no idea where it should be, except there's a small mark on the band here, and when we take that over and put it in front of the sensor, the green light will come on when it gets to zero degrees and now it's mechanically and electrically matched to zero degrees. And to validate that, uh, I'm going to tell it to move to zero degrees and it won't go because it's already at zero. So I'm going to tell it to go to 10 degrees and hit enter and it'll move to 10. I'm going to tell it to go back to zero 
and it goes back to zero as soon as I hit move. And now to validate where it, that it's really right on the money, I'm going to go through this power law situation where it's going to find itself and it will turn itself uh, to increase number of degrees and it will find out where it is physically located. No, we're moving the parabolic trough and the, and the encoder at this point. And then if I tell it to go back to zero, it will go back to zero degrees. So that's how you would, in the field, be a very simple situation. You mount this on a fixed location. That pre-gaps the distance between the sensor and the band, which should be no greater than about two millimeters. Uh, you mount the band on. You have a mechanical zero point uh, on the, on the um, um, parabolic trough shaft. We have a mark on here which says approximately where electrical zero is. On the band, you move the band to the light blinks. That says I'm at electrical zero. Tighten the clamp down, and we're done. We're ready to go. So uh, that's pretty much the entire operation. Um, list price on the sensor itself is $285. The band with the magnetic tape is about $75. There's a variation in that depending upon the diameter of the shaft. Uh, and the number of degrees that we want to have in the full position. This one goes from minus 30 to 270 degrees as we think that's the pretty typical full span for a solar application. But that should give you an idea of what we need and what we have and uh, we're looking forward to working with your organization and, and put these on your solar parabolic troughs and your heliostats. Thank you for your time.